See, it's another paradox, another ironic thing. The best way to transcend something, or in this case, we're talking about darkness, is to accept and see that it's there. You can feel, you can feel, and I can see, like in past relationships, like with a girlfriend or close friend, you can see when something starts to get brought up in them, if you say something or something, it triggers them, and or you're talking about a story and they can relate to, maybe, a story that like maybe is not uh, politically correct or acceptable, or you're doing, you were doing some kind of debaucherous thing, I can see in their eyes, they can relate. But then they try to like, no, I'm, <laughs> yeah, all that, all that stuff that's hiding these tendencies that we have, and a lot of it's subconscious, but sometimes when we talk, when you see a video, you read something, that tendency becomes more conscious. You get to where your subconscious starts to become more conscious. You, you, your subconscious, yeah, it becomes more conscious. <laughs> a lot of the, the deep darkness tendencies, which are the things that block this light of self-realization, seemingly, uh, it's it's in that it's it's in those little when you feel that feeling like you don't want to look at something you can feel it as a tendency it comes up it's like damn it oh no, no, no this is good cool. this because it's, so then the mind justifies it's, well it's just a little subtle thing there's there's no need to look at it it's all good and besides like you might feel bad that's what I noticed in relationships I'd want to talk to my girlfriend about like heavy stuff <laughs> I mean it wasn't heavy for me this is like all I have done since a teenager. I just liked it because I wasn't getting high and drunk and well, I never liked beer. I've told you why, uh, but I stopped getting high at 16. And uh, I, didn't, I had a lot of time on my hands. Everybody else is partying and doing it. And I was like, all right, let me figure out existence. And so I, I, I became my own uh, super advanced psychotherapist because I'm just looking at everything, you know, and my mind was clean enough anyway to where I could break things down on a subtle level. And I remember I told my mentor once, I'm like, we're using, everybody's using each other all the time. I said, even me and you, you're using me because somehow you, you like my energy and I have a certain devotion towards you and, and somehow you feel like, you know, you share these things and, and, and that feels good for you that I understand. And I like you because like you're giving me knowledge and I'm like soaking it up. And so like we're using each other. He's like, yeah, man. I like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> but it's more of a supreme using. That's, you know, you're not using somebody for money or for sex or something. There's different levels, you know. But yeah, if there's only the one self here, then it's selfish, right? So when you feel, just pay attention. Pay attention. You can be alone. You can be with, with somebody. And, and something activates, like you, you become aware of a certain darker tendency you have or something. That, that, and it's come up before, but you never paid any attention to it. Because it was just kind of like a whisper, like a little feeling, and you just, just I'm not gonna look at that. That can happen in, you know, it can be a sexual type thing. You, maybe you have some fantasies or some, some weird fetishes, or it can be like wanting to, uh, you have certain desires or to, to go experience something in life like you know that it's like nonsense but but like yet it won't go away look at all those things write them down on paper like to see them you can't transcend something if, if like those things aren't just gonna go away <laughs> it's almost that's like what the mind says on very silent level it's like that just don't look at it it'll go away I mean try it you know what, what to do if, if somebody doesn't want to look at these things they're not going to look at it but so with my past girlfriends I'd, I'd be wanting to look at this stuff and I could tell they didn't want to look at it and I didn't know why I would get mad at first I'm like I'm like why don't like this is fun stuff to talk about and to look at let's look at it I don't want to look at it you know I'm like what the hell's wrong with you let's look at this <laughs> and then I realized <coughs> I realize that they don't want to look at it because it creates a feeling of guilt and shame in them. People in general, not just girls. It brings up emotions 
associative emotions with having true introspection and true looking. They don't want to look at that stuff. I was like, ah, oh, that's why they don't want to. I was taking it personal. I was like, why the hell don't you want to like talk about what I want to talk about? <laughs> it's like, then I saw, I was like, nah, this is like a safety mechanism. They're not ready to look at that. And, and it's not good for me to try to force them to look at something. That's how you find out if there's matching or not in your relationships. You see, it can take some time to get to that. And, you know, once you see like, okay, um, that's, you can use the words like, I'm not satisfied anymore. <coughs> There's, the matching's not there. You see the different levels in consciousness and it's not compatible. And then relationships end. But the problem is then people, they're so addicted to each other now, they don't want to like, I don't want to let it go. Uh, I just want you to change, all right? Can you just do that? They're like, no, I want you to change though. I'm like, but I'm good. You need to change. <laughs> you see, this whole thing gets acted out. So understood, it's understood that if this is new, if this is a kind of new level of looking, a deeper looking, yeah, yeah, you might like feel, <laughs> it's just nonsense though. The guilt and the shame, that's a tactic the mind uses to try to get you to not look. And it could also be programming religious nonsense that we absorbed, this whole guilt and shame, and I'm a sinner, and oh my God, and uh, all that stuff. God's created all this, the darkness and the light, because you can't experience the light without the darkness. Like, it's his fault, so chill. The mind takes things personal. Oh no, this is bad. So then it labels you as bad when you do it. This is how you know. This, you know, when somebody's overcritical of, of you, I figured this out when I was working <laughs> I made so many mistakes <clears throat> doing jobs that people do in mainstream society because I don't understand how to do them and I would always make mistakes and like a lot of times the managers they're like super critical man I'm like why is this dude why are you so critical like who cares the business isn't gonna collapse like cuz I didn't put the video back in alphabetical order, like when they had video stores. Who cares? You're fired. No, I quit. But then I would contemplate, like, why are they so goddamn critical? And then I realized, wait, that's how they are with their own self. It's a projection of how they treat their own self. You can find out everything about somebody. How they treat you. Be careful, though. If you're doing something that's, you know, off, then you see, you got to factor that in, too. But I'm just saying, <coughs> the average person, <coughs> they do not want to look at their darkness. I always wanted to look at it, for the most part. And so I had trouble. It took me a while to understand what I already explained, why they don't want to look at their darkness. Because when I, when I would try to provoke that, uh, they'd get mad at me. And uh, I didn't like that, but they didn't like being prov provoked. <laughs> I learned that too. So <clears throat> this creates lonely, it can create a sense of lonely loneliness in people who, when you're at the point, you just want to look at things deeper, man. You want to just take things deeper. And you don't, like, don't have anybody to do it with. And some of the spiritual teachers are the worst. They definitely don't want to be exposed. I mentioned before in a video, I listened, I went to a convention, 12-step, that was fun. I hadn't been to one in a couple decades. And um, the guy, this brother was speaking. and He was a good platform speaker. This is the thing. You have good platform talkers, and then you have like people that are really embodying it. Usually they're not speakers on stage. Because the speakers on stage, they're appealing to like a mass uh, mainstream audience. And so if they were really breaking it down audience is going to get like, they're uncomfortable and then they can't sell tickets and then, you know all this you see how the world's all corrupt money runs everything Th that's cool see it it's okay to be aware of those things but not make it into something like like you know like i don't care that that's how the world functions like it, it doesn't bother me what, what like but at the same time like i see like that's what it is so don't don't get depressed or down 
because of how the world functions. You incarnated at a lower time and age. So this is how it works. So I talked to the guy. I wanted to talk to him after. He said some funny, oh no, he didn't believe in God or, or something. He said he didn't believe in God. He just believes in love or something. I just wanted to just understand what he, what he was. I just, yeah, I just wanted to talk to him. That's all. Can we, can we just talk? Because I want to understand where you're coming from. It's a little intriguing. And he couldn't, I don't remember how the conversation, I just remember he got uncomfortable. He got uncomfortable, you know. I was asking him a couple questions that were piercing. And uh, I thought he was on point though. I thought he could, I didn't realize. I, real, I realized after I asked the question, I'm like, oh, damn it. It's another one that I can't talk to. <clears throat> so you don't worry about any of that. You do your own introspection and you become aware of your own darkness and and that same intelligence that's helping you become aware of that it's going to help guide you through it and how to transcend it the first step is you let it you become aware of it you, you admit it you let it come up and sometimes it plays out and so be it there's a chapter in my book uh oh my spiritual book that one's not out yet did i already tell you the autobiography is out there's a link on the website in the description you can see it but I'm, I'm, my spiritual book which is it's done but it has to be edited but some other books have to be edited before that one um, I have a chapter in there how to be free of desires and I'm, I'm talking about how sometimes the tendency is so strong even though you know it's nonsense you like have to go experience it like you just otherwise you know when I was in my early 30s I was in Thailand and I wanted to go to the soapy massage parlor and see what that was like. I just wanted to check it out. I said, no, it's not spiritual. I'm gonna meditate this away and I couldn't do it. After three nights, I said, forget it, man, I'm going. I had to like experience it and see. So and it was silly. They put soap on, you're both naked and she put soap on you and soap on her and then she like rubs her body against you. I like felt bad. And then she could sense it. She was, girls were sensitive. She could, she's like, he thinks this is stupid. <laughs> so then we just talked after. I just, I interviewed her and stuff. I asked like, do you like what you're doing? And is it fun? And she says, yeah, I'm just doing it for a little bit. Uh, making some money and buying a phone and help my mom. And then I'm out. I'm not going to do this crazy shit forever. I was like, that, that is cool. I'd have done something like that. And when I was living in LA, maybe if, if I had the personality for it, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I would have had to do it with guys. And yeah, that's not going to happen. I wouldn't even want to do it with girls though. But let's not lose focus. We're talking about desire. Sometimes, you know, you gotta, you gotta like do what you gotta do. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So you let this inner sanction navigate for you what you're supposed to do and not do and experience and how to view, how to perceive this so-called darkness. Darkness and light is the same thing. It's just two opposite sides of the same coin. Don't, don't view it in a way that's just going to induce guilt and shame. Like that's the mind doing that. Don't believe in that. That's conditioning. You absorbed it from your parents or society or religion or something. You have to like let go of that. Because if you don't let go of that, you're not going to be able to do this this work that I'm talking about, and you're just going to be delaying things. That's okay. I mean, we can't delay it forever. But for those who are tuned, who who you know get it, yeah, look at your darkness, then you then you transcend it. I think we're good. Wow, the last video also was at 14 minutes. Let's make it at 14. Bam. See you soon.